Good morning. <clears throat> I'd like to talk to you for a few moments about the operation of a motorcycle gearbox. A motorcycle gearbox is a five or six speed sequential gearbox. Positive stop and a single neutral. It's a constant mesh gearbox. Uh, and it uses dog clutches, not synchro rings, like a car does. And I'm going to explain that term because it's rather important in how you use it. A motorcycle gearbox has a shift pattern like a human hand. It has neutral, where the gearbox is not connected to the, where the engine is not connected to the wheels, that's between first and second. It has first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth, fifth, and possibly sixth gear on some bikes. It's in a shape like a hand. I'd like to show you how it works. <coughs> now this bike is a 2003 R6. It's currently in neutral. The engine's not running and I can turn the wheel. To select first gear I would pull the clutch in and I would press lightly down on the lever. I would preload the lever a little bit. That's taking, oh, 150, 200 grams or something, a, a fifth of a pound, very little pressure. We move the wheel a little bit and you notice it drop a little more. There's a second stage of click which means the gears have now engaged. <coughs> That took um, maybe a pound and a half, let's say less than one kilogram of preload pressure. The bike's now in first gear, that's the lowest gear. So we go to move off, we give the engine a few revs, we gently release the clutch, ride the clutch and move the bike away. And what we do then to change into the next gear once we're rolling at 15, 20 kilometers an hour or something, is we put a little bit of pressure under the gear lever. We tuck our toes under there and we preload. And while the engine is driving, the gearbox won't want to shift because there's drive... Which way would it be going? It would be going that way. There will be drive through the system. So when we release the, the throttle or when we grab the clutch a little bit, it releases the pressure through the system. There's no torque going through and the gear will change. I think I've got it back into neutral there, yeah. Let's go to first. There we go, that's second. When there's no torque going through the system, the gears can slide apart and into the next slot. Now if we simply keep trying to change without any movement there, the gears, the dog clutches, the pins and slots don't line up. They do require a little bit of movement, see that, to drop into the next gear. See how there's one stage and then a second stage. I think we're now in third gear. We'll try again. That's fourth gear. That's fifth gear. Notice the two stages. Let's come back down our gears. We slow down. We take the clutch. There's no drive through the gearbox. It can go down into the next gear. We preload again. It goes down another gear. Here it click into the gear then, it was between gears for a moment. We rotated the gears a little bit and it slid in and met its next gear. Watch that again. See the two stages, one to release the last gear and then the next to slide the next gear into place. Now we're back in first gear here. We lift up a little bit, halfway, you can see that. That should, no, that's, that's neutral. First gear. Okay, we lift and preload, we go halfway, and we'll get neutral. Back to first, we'll go all the way, we get second gear. All the way, we get third gear. All the way, we get fourth gear. Fifth gear, sixth gear. That's in top gear. If you put too much stress and pressure into this system, you can bend the selector forks inside the gearbox. It's a little thing like a fork, it's much smaller than this, but it's a similar shape, has a fork at one end. It's a $20 part, not a problem. Unfortunately, it costs about $1,000 to strip the bike down, get the engine out, separate the engine, and straighten out or change the selector fork. So, if you mess it up, it's very expensive to fix. It's not the part that you break that costs a lot, it's the labour and the amount of other stuff that has to be fixed. Now a very common mistake that riders make, newer riders make, and sometimes older riders who haven't been taught correctly, 
is to stop the bike still in a higher gear. In this case, the bike's in sixth gear. We've come to a halt, they're sitting at the lights, they want to go, the light changes, they start to let the clutch out, they realise their mistake, the bike won't drive anywhere, it's in top gear. So what do they do? Can I go now? No, it's still not driving properly. Oh my God, something is wrong with it. I know I'll hit it harder, 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 harder. In doing that, you will bend and damage those selector forks. There is a way to do it. You can either roll the bike slightly forward or back with your feet, the clutch out, with the engine not running, with the clutch in if the engine is running, and move it down like this, and that's now back to first gear. The other way to do it is with the engine idling, or perhaps just slightly above idle, let's go back up our gears, you release the clutch just to the take-up point, just where there is a slight amount of drive coming through the clutch, and it has the same effect. It will turn the internals on the gearbox, and then you can change down once. Pull the clutch in, push the gear. Pull the clutch in, release the clutch slightly to move the internals, push down again. Release the clutch slightly to move the internals, pull it in again, push down. Release the clutch slightly, push down. Release the clutch slightly, push down. Release the clutch slightly, the lever won't move. The lever won't move because we've already now reached first gear. We go up very slightly, with in neutral. So that's our first gear that we want. The system is at idle, just let the clutch out to the take up point, take it in again, push gently down, let it out again, down, out, down, out, down, until that lever won't move any further. When the lever won't move, you know you're in first gear and you're good to go. You shouldn't ever have to apply a lot of force to a gear lever. A few pounds, a couple of kilograms is about as much as it ever takes. If it won't shift, there's a reason usually because there is a load on the gearbox. A car gearbox, a modern manual car gearbox, uh, is, has a device between the gears called a synchro mesh. It's like a tiny little clutch or brake. It takes the form of a cone and ring. When you operate the gear lever, you come through neutral and try to get into the next gears, but the gears are spinning at a slightly different speed. And as you push against the lever, it operates that little break between the things, between the edges of the gears until they match speeds and then they slide into place. If the synchro ring is worn out or if you're a bit firm with your gear change, you can overcome it and you can get the gears to grind. They'll go A motorcycle gearbox doesn't work like that. It doesn't have synchro rings. It has what we call dog clutches and dog clutches engage like gears. Uh, on one side of the gear you'll have three pins and three slots and as the gear moves around the pins can slide into the slots. The holes and the pins have to line up. On the other side you have uh, two crowns that can join like this. If, the, if the, 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 the teeth line up like that they'll slot in and go. The gears can move side to side on the shaft. And that's how it works. That means you don't gently push against the edges of the, 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 the synchro ring until the speeds of the gears line up. They need a slightly different speed to work. If they're at the same speed already, there's a very good chance that the gears are not lined up and you can't move that gear in. The gears have to move around a little bit until the dog clutches can slot into place. And that's, this is this halfway thing. You go halfway, halfway, there we go, to slide out of gear, and the second half of the way to slide the next gear into place. And notice that there is a slight movement between the two gears so that they go around until the next peg can slide into the next hole, until it can engage the next gear. And that's very important. Now the way to operate a motorcycle gearbox correctly is to start with your feet. 
you start by putting your foot under or over the lever and preloading it lightly in the direction you wish it to go and then you time the shift by using your hands. You may do it by slightly closing the throttle, you may do it simply by pulling the clutch in a little, but by doing either of those things or both of those things, what you're doing is you're taking the pressure, the torque, the drive out of the transmission system. And by doing that, you allow the lever to slide to the next spot. What you don't do is operate your hands first and then think about your feet. It can be made to work that way, but that is not the preferred way to do it. The preferred way to do it is put a gentle pressure under the lever and then time the shift with your hands. Notice that you have to release that lever every single time. You have to clear the lever. When we're teaching students, we like to say to them, do your shift like so, then clear the lever. Do your shift like so, then clear the lever. We like to do that because from 30 yards away we can see that they've done it. It's very, very clear. You can, of course, just release the pressure, but we like to see those toes move. Notice, obviously, that you put your foot with the instep on the peg, like so, so that you simply move your foot like that. You don't have to move your foot from some other place. You don't ride with your heel on the peg, you don't ride with your toes on the peg, you ride with the instep on the peg so that you can access the controls without having to take your foot off the peg. And it's the same on the other side for the brake. <clears throat> I'm going to take you out and show you another bike.